All right, guys, new to the market, the Rave. Bullet, Bullet Pro, Bullet GT. This is called the Bullet Pro, but I think that uh, they kind of eliminated that name. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, all I see on their website is the, the Bullet and the, G, the Bullet GT. And on the GT, there's this one and one that has a... Um, a dual battery and I've uh, been following this online for a long time uh, in the making and uh, fabulous looking bike guys wait till you see it this is probably one of the uh, best looking bikes on the market today and uh, the pricing right now is around 1400 bucks for the bullet all the way up to about $2,200 for the GT. And uh, this is probably intro. I, I would assume this is this bike's going to go up in price because it's pretty fab. Designed in the USA and made with global components. Uh, basically, this is made in one of the biggest bike shops in the world, in China. With global components, of course. And I don't really want to open it this way. I'm just getting a sneak peek, guys. Can't see much because of the beautiful packing. But I'm going to open it the way uh, I think it should be opened on this bike because we're going to see how well it's packaged. And then uh, it's just easier to get this bike out. Uh, the package comes uh, packed at about 102 pounds. I think you can see it up here somewhere. One point four pounds, right on the side. I know the color because it's marked on it. Wait till you see this bike, guys. And on this bike, you know how I save these covers, uh, and I put them around my. My garage. I'm going to save both sides of this bike. Uh, there's some stickers on this side. No stickers on this side, so I may save the top here that says uh, Rave on it. I'm very proud that they reached out to me. Uh, very proud uh, that I'm one of the first in the country to get to review this bike. All right, guys, you ready? Here we go. Beautiful. The frame design is phenomenal, guys. So I'll take this and cut this out, stick it on a wall as well as that. So if a moped style e-bike is on your list of bikes to get, Definitely consider this bike. Um, like I said, new on the market. The design is beautiful. Wait till you see it put together. And do not wreck your own box because if you find that you need to send it back, you'll need your box to send it back. All right, took the material off the kickstand so I can set it up right. With 20 by 4 inch fat tire, CTS, big fat tire. Another thing this has, these are decals, but they're clear coated. They put these decals on, I watched a video on how they put them on, and then they clear coated it. So these are pretty permanent. They look nice, guys. Very nice looking.
All right, guys, notice the seat, nice and big. Sits up high up back here, so it kind of pushes you forward a little bit. Beautiful uh, rear fender. This bike got it going on, guys. So Rave gives you uh, tools to do everything I'm doing. I just happen to be using a, a tool that's a, more of a speed tool because I do a lot of these bikes. It just makes it easier on me. If you're doing one, the tools they provide are great. At least get your first few threads in by hand. That way you know, you know you're not uh, cross-threading them. So one of the things you also want to do is make sure you get these things even. Like right now, I got the top too tight and the, and the bottom too loose. I want to make sure that this uh, yoke is, is pretty even on top and bottom. All right, now that I've got the handlebars on, I'm going to put the tire on so I can get it elevated so I can work on the other things, which is the headlight, the fender, things like that. So let's elevate it by putting the front wheel on. All right, guys, we have the wheel on. It does have hydraulic brakes, but I, this was uh, one of the first batches. This is out of the first batch. I know they, they took these apart at uh, once they arrived onto the shores of the US and they tested these bikes out. This may have been one of the ones that they tested in terms of, uh, they knew that the original mechanical brakes weren't great. So they put hydraulic brakes on it. And I think when they tested these hydraulic brakes, they may not have put the uh, spacer back in. No big deal. I knew it was hydraulic. When you know it's hydraulic, you don't touch those brake lines until you have the rotor in place. Okay, got the wheel on. I need to tighten them. In order to tighten them, i got to sit the bike straight up so I don't have any uh, tilt on the wheel. I'll show you how to do that. We're just going to stand it upright and we're going to make sure that the space between here and here is the same. And we want the dropout to be right in the middle. Using the tool they provided, very easy. It's the uh, second largest uh, opening on the tool, and then repeat it on the other side. Now you may find this cap cover on the other side. That's great. I just did it. Now I'm going to put that cover back on. I don't know that it needs it. I don't see one on this side, and they're fully covered, enclosed uh, nut caps. Uh, just like that it's on there. If it falls off, no big deal. Put the fender on. Align it up. Washer. And a nylon nut. That's a nice fender. I like that style. Better than that, that light is bad. That is an awesome looking light. All right, now we're going to put this on. So there's two screws down in here. We will take those out. All right, guys, the hardest part is aligning the light uh, up inside the bracket. It's not a killer, but it's probably the hardest uh, portion of the job so far. Not a big deal. I got this side done. I'm just kind of tightening it up a little bit. All right. Now we got to take this red plug and find the light plug. Okay. So this plug for the light happens to be 
kind of underneath the battery. I don't know if you guys can see it right here. So you can either plug this way, I think, or come up and over the top and plug in. I think I'm going to take it up and over the top to plug in. And remember, there's an aligner to line up to. So make, make sure you match your aligner and just plug it right in. And it's nice that it does tuck up under there. That, look, that tucks up nicely. Very nicely done, uh, Rave. Very nicely done. All right. Other than uh, pedals, I think we're mostly assembled. Let's throw the pedals on. The pedals, guys, are very simple. Left goes on the left side. Right goes on the right side. Right goes clockwise. Now we'll tighten it up in a minute. As you can see here. Left goes counterclockwise. Then we'll take the pedal wrench. Snug that one up. Pedal wrench. Snug that one up. Now here. All right, guys. The only other thing on this bike that is needed at all, and it would depend on the state you live in, is a little uh, like motorcycle license plate holder. And that would go in the place back here. I do not need it. I don't even want my state to even think that this is a licensed uh, or need to be licensed bike to be pulled over. So I'm not putting it on. Now remember, I'm not the smallest guy in the world. I weigh 255 pounds. Uh, five foot ten, five foot ten and a half. This bike feels pretty good. In the initial impression, it, I thought it was a little bit smaller than maybe other 20 by 4 inch bikes. But uh, when you sit on it, it feels really good. Seat feels very comfortable. And you push and you turn it. It takes about three seconds to turn the display on. And then you push and turn the light on. That takes about three more seconds. And that's what it looks like. The, the light in here, in the garage, is pure daylight out. The light is the brightest light I have ever seen on an e-bike so far. Standard e-bike, uh, standard uh, issued light. I think the bike looks fabulous, and I'm excited to ride it. Time to get out and rave on the rave. <laughs> yeah, very excited here, guys. Let's uh, let's go. We're going to put it in PAS3. I've already set the speed up to uh, the 40 miles an hour, or 40 kilometers an hour. And we are going to the post office first. I got some pictures I'm going to take of this thing because it's uh this thing's a beauty yeah it's about 5 15 in the afternoon guys maybe 5 30 let's see I'm gonna 5.25. I am going to put the speed app on. I'm not going to put uh, the Relive app on because we're not going for any kind of distance. We're just going to see how far we want to uh, go and do stuff here. Alright. Everything's reset. Here we go. Now, uh, so you guys know, these uh, moped style devices are not uh, pedal bikes. It can pedal uh, if you need to, if you want to. Uh, I've got short legs. Inseam is about 29, uh, 29 and a half, 30 tops. So, uh, that's all good. 
and I can pedal it. Probably not the most comfortable thing in the world, but I can pedal it. Brakes are pretty good. We'll pedal some. Yeah, that works my uh, bad left knee pretty hard. After I drop off my piece of mail, we'll uh, we'll do some testing. Anyway, she's very pretty bike. Doing 27.13. I th I know I had it over 30 already. Uh, 29. I'm sorry. 29.16. Been my top speed. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, thumb throttle. The thumb throttle is a step above. Uh, it's actually got a rubber. It's actually got a rubber uh, piece where your finger, where your thumb goes, and it feels. Sorry, it feels nice. I just ate dinner and going for a ride. little growling on the brake shit and uh, that's okay I haven't I haven't shrewd them or anything I haven't fixed them haven't haven't done anything just out of the box this is what we're getting guys but she's beautiful Yeah, let's take the 3D or the the uh, 360 cam off and give you a little look see. All right, I'm gonna turn it upside down. I'll flip the image for you, and this is what she looks like: the CTS BFT 20 by 4 inch tires, the SIS uh, Shimano shifter. I think it's the most entry-level shifter, but really it's because you're really not uh, made to be pedaling this uh, bike. You can pedal it, um, but it's not the best in the world. You can see there's a reflector and a little tail light. You can come over here, you can see the, uh, the nut-branded brake. Come over here, you can see the 1,000-pound red uh, spring shock. See the logo, beautiful logo. We'll come back up here, we'll come around. We'll see the fender and we'll see the beautiful headlight. Yeah, then we'll come back, we'll look at the seat. We have something here. I don't know if it's for a small mini tank or something like that. Uh, you can put a secondary battery up under here uh, to give you 28 uh, amp hours this one is a 20 amp hour these things come in three different price range uh like 1400 bucks for the lowest level on that one the bullet this frame comes down more like this so there's a much more space in here i think the bullet pro and the bullet gt look the best because uh it looks more um, refined of a product then we'll flip back up here and we'll look right here Here's where we adjust our uh, compression on our shock. And over here, we set our preload. And it's nice because this compression gives you uh, multiple variables of compression. I have it locked out. Um, and then the thumb throttle, like I said, it's got a little bit of grip in here, that's nice. The standard SIS shifter. Uh, just be nice if they sold that in black, it would look really good. Um, and then we have the uh, display. Beautiful bike. And I put my little bar end mirror on it. And the kickstand is non-adjustable. 
But if you take a look at it, man, that's a beautiful bike, man. All right, let's take it for some more rides and give it some more testing out. You can hear the brake squeak, but again, I'm not sweating it because I, I have not adjusted anything. I didn't hear any brake squeak yesterday, but I do hear it today. All right, we're going to pedal a little here, get us across this road. Well, let's throttle first, get us across the road. Being that it's a very small, tight pedal situation. Okay, pedaling. Now remember, I've already set mine to its max speed. Pedaling we're doing. About 13 miles an hour in PAS1. Now I'm going to put the camera back up here, stretch it out a little bit so we can get some better footage. Now we'll go into PAS2, pedaling in PAS2. We're going up a hill. PAS2 takes a little bit to get up to speed. Up, oh, coming to a stop sign. All right, let's go down this road. PAS2 is about 15, 16. Yeah, let's call it 15, 16 miles an hour. PAS3 pedaling. Ah, frustrating. This should get us close to the 28 miles an hour. My knee is finally feeling a little better. And 24, so I know I can get it faster on throttle than I can pedaling. So let's just leave it at about 25 for pedaling. Almost 27. go this way we'll head back this way rather than uh, heading back the other way with uh, it being rush hour <laughs> rush hour in this little city really I'm gonna drive you by my son David's house take a look at my yard work today not the best yard work but uh, his grass was really long, so I had to mow it just to make sure uh, he doesn't get a letter from his HOA. Downhill, I know this will reach, this got to be, be able to reach easily 30 on any of my downhills. the grass I mowed. Still a little high, but certainly looks better than it did this morning. Certainly looks better than it did this morning. Going up a slight hill. Yeah, the components on this bike are pretty good, guys. Uh, the nut branded hydraulic brakes are good. 
Um, I would think it's, they're good. Uh, they're not the best hydraulic brakes, but they break this thing pretty good. Yeah, they break this thing pretty good. All right, now we're gonna take this. You guys are familiar here. Little whoop de doos, baby. Yeah, we haven't bedded the brakes or anything, guys, so don't expect the best in the world. But they are they are fine for what, what we're doing, and uh, the fact that they haven't been bedded. They're breaking this thing just fine. All right, we're going to turn around here. Yeah, that front brake is grippy. It makes noise because I haven't got it tuned yet. But it's grippy. Yeah, this... this uh, doesn't have crazy um, torque off the rip. I think it's uh, 70 or 75 Newton meters of torque off the rip. Uh, others have 85 to 95, but once this thing gets going, yeah, she was just about doing 28 right there on a flat surface. Once we get going down a commercial, that will have some of our flattest road, other than it's a hilly, we will, uh, we will see what the top speed is for 255 pounds, maybe 260. Oh, we're going to stop up here and take some pictures of it, too, so... Here, we're pretty flat. 28.4. 27.5. Slightly going uphill. Coming flat again. Yeah, she does 28 miles an hour on flat road.
range is perfectly flat right here. 28.24. Now my understanding is the uh, GT is a little faster. But uh, 28.24, not moving my feet at all. It's great. I love this bike. I think Rave is uh, going to be one of the next big hitters in this style bike. I think, I think them and Juiced and uh, Ariel Grizzly and and a few others, but uh, this bike has a lot of style, guys. Just, just this thing is just drenched in style. All right. Uh, overall, this is not a uh, A B C D grade. This is an exceptional bike. This is an exceptional buy right now, and. Uh, if you want a moped style bike, uh, I don't think you necessarily have to look any further. Uh, yeah, this is great. I love this bike. Um, I, there, there are four choices in color, black, green, yellow, and red. Now when I first saw them, my brain said, I want that yellow one. I really want the yellow. Well, the yellow was, uh, I think there were less of them made, or the yellows were already spoken for. And uh, I said, well, I don't really care what color I get. And uh, my person told me really black or green would be the best because uh, the reds were in minimum quantity too. Look what I got to deal with. Thank you. Appreciate it. Whoa. Gotta outrun that dust. Anyway, um, either one, black or green, surprise me, I don't care. Um, thinking it was probably gonna be black. It was not black, it was green. And I am so glad because the green has pop. It looks really good, guys. Don't be afraid of green. She's a pretty bike. This is the first batch, that's why they put the brakes, the hydraulic brakes, because they initially came with uh, mechanical brakes. And uh, I think they put air in them, which is great. Uh, so I only put uh, three more pounds because it's up to 30. And it, you guys can tell the, the wheels are quiet. These are still off-road off CTS BFTs, but they are quiet. Quieter than uh, the others, quieter than the uh, Chow Yang and the uh, Kenda. Similar look, a little more rounded over. Now we'll apply the brakes right here. See, she, she can brake. <laughs> she can brake. One finger front pull on the front brake. Broke it just nicely. Now we'll come off these curves a couple of times. Let's uh, do a little bit of the front end compression here. There we go. Now this is as uh, much compression as it'll give. I'm not gonna go off fast first because I'm not sure. Oh, soft as can be, soft as can be. So now we'll do it a little faster.
yeah, brakes are good. Uh, compression's good. And just for one more thing, we'll ride it off into this grass now. You guys may say, well, why are you riding in just grass? That's no big deal. My grass is a big deal. <laughs> and uh, maybe I'll show you a little bit of it as we drive by it. I don't know. But uh, this is probably seven or eight inch tall grass. Uh, voles and gophers live in this grass. You see gopher hole right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Gophers right here. Gophers, 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 gophers. Yeah, gophers. Gophers. And then voles live up in here. Yeah, my, my yard is a is a torture test. I don't like taking stuff through my yard. And there we have it. Nice ride. All right, guys, that's the video for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share, and subscribe below. And we'll see you on the next episode.